I only play fully realized human beings, mm. as I've shared with you. Yeah. Only play a fully realized human being. Okay. So, what is a fully realized human being? What I am, you are, everybody listening and experiencing this is a fully realized human being. Meaning, you had a parent? Mm -hmm. Did you know your parents? Did you not know your parents? How did that affect your life? How did those relationships? I, I always talk about writing a backstory mm -hmm. for your character. Whether it ever shows up in the movie or television series or on stage, whether it ever shows up or not is irrelevant because it will inform what you do. Mm. Case, point, and example. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Inspire to Inspire podcast, a place for actors, filmmakers, and content creators just to tune in and connect the dots within their own reality. On today's episode, we got someone who's truly special to me. He's been involved in my life since I was a kid. He's been working this business for over four decades, and this has been somebody that has been a true inspiration on why I even wanted to become an actor growing up. You know, over the years, He's been not only part of my childhood, but he's been part of yours. He's been part of our adulthood too, because he's still working. You know, you've seen Oboe in projects like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Ballers, Dear White People playing Dean Fairbrooks. Also one of the lead actors on the hit TV show SWAT playing Daniel Harrison, AKA Hondo's dad, who's played by Shamar Moore. On top of that, you've seen him in movies like Life playing Willie Long, you know, the old man in the wheelchair. Yeah, that's Oba. You've seen him in How High playing the dean that got high off the brownies. Iconic scene. You've seen him in John Q. And on top of that, him and I were both able to star alongside Johnny Depp in the movie City of Lies about how the Torres B.I.G. got killed. And now when it comes to voiceovers, y'all know the hit show Rocket Power, right? Yeah. You remember Conroy, the Jamaican that ran the street park? Voiceover by Oba as well. Now, I'd like to introduce my godfather, Oba Babatunde. Uh, uh, I'm so thrilled to be here with you. You know, um, thank you so much for that kind introduction. And, you know, uh, let me just start off by saying I am exceptionally honored, pleased, and proud to be here with you today because you represent a great pride that I have in life. Having been knowing you and watching you mature and grow into the man that you are, the talent that you are, and the human being that you are is really a great pleasure for me. You know, uh, obviously your parents and I are very, very close. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it's the kind of thing that you don't often get an opportunity mm -hmm. to watch someone actually mature and go through the stages of life. And that's what I've been able to do. And then at this maturation, your particular age maturation, you know, uh, and having had the opportunity to watch you from a young baby to mm -hmm. where you are now has given me great, great pride. So I wanted to say that, and I, and I wanted to also thank the audience that are tuning in and thank you for the years of support. You know, my intention has always been to represent you in the mm -hmm. best of my ability. And if I've been able to do that, you know, they say that if you've been able to affect change mm -hmm. in one individual's life, in just one individual's life, that when you are out of here, off this planet, that your living has not been in vain. So mm. that was been, has been my, my, my desire, to affect change. And I hope that it's a positive change. And Dominique, I can say this from my heart. I love, admire, and respect you greatly. Mm, and thank you I for allowing me to be you. On, your, on your podcast. Man, honestly, oh, that, that, that warms my heart so much because, again, it's like, over the years, like I remember, I remember as a kid, right, walking to your house. I remember Pastor bringing me over, and, and 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 I always remember you had like this like area. You just had this like all these awards, right? From theater, <laughs> from just over this this just awards you've won from just different pro. It's just like you just had all these awards, and I used to always be like, dang, like, what do I need to do in order to? 
be not only respected at that level, but as big as an inspiration as you are because you your body of work speaks louder than your words. And, you know, for me, you know, I, 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 as much as I feel like I've spent my whole life around you, something I want to dive into today just off the rip is for you, you, you know, over the years, you've done so many projects, but it's like, where did this all start from? Like, why acting? Like, why did you even fall into this? How did this even manifest into your reality, you know? Right. Well, let me, let me, before I'm going to do that, but I want to say something. You mentioned the, the number of awards that I have, and I'm very honored to have received those awards. But I want to share that as important and as wonderful and as a proud as I am of those awards, I have always been more interested in the reward mm. as opposed to the award. Awards are wonderful. There's someone that says, mm. hey, you know, we appreciate what you've done, you know, and uh, but those things are also sub very subjective. Yeah. But the reward is that which comes back from the individuals that you have served throughout your career and your wow. life. I have a saying, I have a lot of sayings, but one of them is that your, your do is not necessarily your who. Mm. Your do is what affects change in your life, but your who is how you affect change in someone else's life. So again, as honored as I am, you know, and, you know, thrilled that, that I, because you could see those mm. awards and go, mm. wow, that's something to aspire to. That's a great thing. But mm. they sit there in the house, mm. right? Mm. And I can't eat those. I can't feed the family with those. But they're great. They're reminders of, mm. of, 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 a, of, a, of a benchmark along mm. the way. You know, I also say that, um, you know, the, and I've shared this with you. I said the gig is the pearl. Mm. But I am interested in the string of pearls. And that is what a career is. A gig is a gig. You get a job, you work on that job, you do what it is, and then it comes to an end. No matter how great it is, eventually it comes to an end. And mm -hmm. then you got to move on to the next. Yeah. And so it's about, not about the gig, it's about the process of what you've learned through each one of those things that take the, that pearl and turn it into a string of pearls. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in terms of your question, um, I think that this well, I could say profession. I think it, uh, it's a calling mm. more than it is a choosing. Because mm -hmm. I've watched you. Yeah. You've always had that energy. You've always had that, that desire. And you've manifested in different areas. Facts. You know, you've manifested mm. in the boxing ring. You mm -hmm. know, you've manifested through, through uh, when, when, when you and Malachi would get together and be dancing and, and doing mm -hmm. your things. You know, nice. and, 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 and I've watched you in, in through your, your maturation through school, when you went to school and you learned about filmmaking. And then we got an opportunity to work together and put projects together. You'd come over and you would film Malachi. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I watched your directorial skills grow. So it's all been a maturation, but it started with the seed that was already planted in you. Mm. You see... I always say to, to, to artists, when they say, what advice do you have? I said, listen, they cannot take from you what they did not give to you. Mm. They cannot take from you mm. what they did not give to you. You see, then you understand. So well, well, what do you mean by that? Well, your gifts and your talents, your mm. abilities, they were given to you by the most high. Facts. Now, how you've gone about developing those, that's on you. Mm. But you came here with something really specifically generating you in that direction of mm. the, the moves that you're making and that you continue to make. Look at this podcast now. This Facts. came to you. Nobody just said, hey, look, you're going to do a podcast now, Dominique. <laughs> no. <Facts>. Dominique <laughs> said, hey, you know, mm. and I remember you, your writings. You know, you mm. would send me things that you had written. I'm getting chills right now. Because mm. this is so real for me, because mm. I've been able to watch it mature. So in terms of my own journey, um, I remember as far back as I have memory, 
-hmm. that there's always been a desire mm -hmm. to present myself in some sort of, um, I don't know whether it's a performance or entertainment or um, uh, 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 inspiration to mm -hmm. others. You know, I started out my professional career. My last year of high school, I began to write poetry. Mm. I wrote these poems. And then in my first year of college, I expanded those poems into one act plays. So I took the writings and then took and create and brought those characters to life and hired and got other people to mm -hmm. be involved in this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was my sort of introduction into the formal aspect of theater. But gotcha. it started with me writing down very much like I've seen you do. That's crazy. Writing That's crazy. down what's inside of you mm. and what was going on in, in my life and in the life of the people in the neighborhood that I grew up in and what was going on in the world. I wrote poems about that. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, um, what was happening in my neighborhood as a kid? You know, I, I wrote that that that, 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 a poem about that. And mm. then I would take, like I said, and, and evolve those into one act plays where I would bring forth the character. Mm. So that, that introduced me into how I got involved into the, uh, the manif manifestation of bringing these, these poems to life. And that became theater. That's, okay. Then I, I got that. involved That's crazy. in the theater community, mm. Mm. right? Because I grew up in New York. Yeah. So I got involved in the theater community. But what I also identified, <laughs> and you probably will identify the same thing, and many of the people that are watching, mm. is that it finds itself. I can tell you, no matter what you've learned mm -hmm. in your life, no matter what it is, it will find a way to manifest itself in your artistic expression in one way or another. Listen. So true. Look, so true. look how so the true. fact that you were learning the pugilistic skills and then you go for this opportunity and this like, well, okay, there's a lot of actors that will come in. But when you said, oh, by the way, let me just show you a little something. And then you went to work, boom, 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 boom. And they were like, wait a minute, this guy really knows what he's doing. It's not just the role, it's what else he's bringing to the role and what that has to do with what you Dominique Columbus was bringing based on what was the, 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 the makeup, all the elements and mm -hmm. particles. You see, you're a tapestry. We all are. We're a tapestry. We're a makeup of all the different things that we've experienced in life. The brain never stops recording. It is always recording. Mm -hmm. So when the baby cry, the laughter, the trauma that you may have experienced. Some of the things that went on in school, which wasn't so cool mm -hmm. for my godson. And how he, how you've taken those things and incorporated them, whether you're realizing it or not, you've incorporated those things into the fire Facts. that is yeah. and continues to be Facts. Dominique Columbus. Mm. You see, so it was the same thing. You know, you talk about SWAT. There was a great episode that we did mm -hmm. that was birthed out of Oba's personal life. Really? I didn't know and that. And when I told the story mm. to the, 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 the showrunner and the show creator, they said, wow, do you think we could use that in terms of Daniel Harrelson's senior story? I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just my story. It's everybody that has grown up in a situation where the circumstances of this country, you may have encountered something like this. And mm -hmm. so it hits home. So in terms of someone says, well, how did you get started? Well, I was born <laughs> and I was not born into a community mm. i was born onto a planet so there were things that already existed that i came into and that was 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 formed a, a part of me 
the things that I saw on television, those who were, mm. who were the people that came before me, mm -hmm. the music that I heard, the dancing that I saw. The, 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 I, I started out learning martial arts mm. at an early age. And so that has found its way into different movies that I've done. See, it's crazy you know? that and I'm so glad that you bring this up because for those who don't know, Oba was actually the one who coached me to get ready for Ray Donovan. So I, I, I really, still to this day, honestly, my foundation, how I break down a script and how I prepare for a character comes from that, like as many acting classes I feel like I've done, I, there's, there's something so powerful when you just sit down one-on-one -on -one with somebody who has the experience. And I remember we went to the Burbank Park, we sat down yes. with me and the way we broke down line by line on the script and how methodical you were about it. I love how you were challenging me to go inward to find these little uh, tools that can be applied to this character that can bring it to life. Because again, my question for you, which I kind of wanted to dive into is like, that's one thing I feel like that's always blown my mind about you. It's like, you have this ensemble vault of characters you've been able to develop your entire life. And you, you I know it's come from like I said, people in your neighborhood, maybe stories from those poems, experiences that you got thrown into X, Y, and Z. But it's like, how, 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 like, how does mo most of your characters get developed? Because again, like, your vault is insane. So I know for yeah. anybody who's a fan of yours who's been watching you for all these years, you never play the same character twice. Right, right. You know, and you know what? So it's a great, great, great question. I, I'll sum it up and then I'll go into detail, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll capsulize it in. I only play fully realized human beings, mm. as I've shared with you. Yeah. Only play a fully realized human being. Okay. So what is a fully realized human being? They had a beginning. Mm. Okay. Now, I share this with you and I'll share it with your audience. Every entrance is an exit from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And every exit is an entrance, entrance. into somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about that on the basis of developing these per people. Fully realized human beings. Mm -hmm. What I am, you are, everybody listening and experiencing this is a fully realized human being. Mm -hmm. Meaning what you had a parent, Mm -hmm. Did you know your parents? Did you not know your parents? How did that affect your life? How did those relationships? When I, I'll give you an example. I, I always talk about writing a backstory mm -hmm. for your character, whether it ever shows up in the movie or television series or on stage, whether it ever shows up or not is irrelevant because it will inform what you do. Mm -hmm. Case point and example. Mm -hmm. Life. You mentioned the movie Life. Um, the old guy in this wheelchair telling the story. Mm -hmm. And then there's a scene when they're talking to us at the table and they ask, hey man, how did you end up in here, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and, then, and then one of the characters said, he killed somebody with an ax hammer. And I said, that's what they say. And they mm -hmm. say, yeah, and, 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 and Bernie Mac's character say, yeah, but a lot of people say it though, a lot of people say <laughs> it. <laughs> so, so, okay. so, 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 uh, I, what I did was I wrote a backstory on mm -hmm. how my guy ended up on that plantation. And I'll, and I'll share it with you to show you the detail. Mm -hmm. My character was down with his friends playing at the water hole. We got a ball, we're throwing it back. Some little white kids come along and they say, give me the ball. And I say, no, this is our ball. And they say, we don't care. We want the ball. Give me the ball. Me and the kid get into a scrap. Then we hear a call. Bobby! It was the boy's father. Mm -hmm. All of us scatter. Everybody takes off. Later that night, there's a knock on my door. My dad goes to the door. 
and I'm standing behind him. He takes and waves my hand like waves his hand like that to go downstairs and hide. And they say, hey, look here. Uh, it was the little boy's father with the sheriff. And they said, uh, send your boy out here. My daddy says, for what? Mm. He said, no matter what, send him out here. And he said, my daddy, I hear my daddy say, for what? And they said, well, it's him or you. I hear quiet. Then I hear shuffling. I'm hiding downstairs in the basement. Then I hear my mother weeping. Then shuffling, laughter, and then quiet again. When I come upstairs, my mother is lying on the floor. She's been abused. Blood, a puddle of blood is formed between her legs and she's weeping. I run outside to find my daddy, to tell him what happened and what's going on. And, then, and as I turn the corner from the tree, there's my daddy, he's, he's hanging by his neck. His private parts have been cut off and stuck in his mouth. A few years later, we continued to work on the plantation. My mother died of poor health. And one day, my sister was approached by that same man who was that boy's father. And my sister wasn't working fast enough for him and he slapped her. And I jumped up and he looked at me and he said, better step back or you'll end up just like your daddy. Later that man, that night was found bludgeoned to death. I never admitted or denied what had happened. Mm. Now that's the backstory that I wrote for how my character ended up on that work farm. Mm. So that everything that you see is born out of that story where that story never makes itself manifest in the movie. Mm -hmm. It informed the character that you saw and everything that came from that character. Because Willie, the character, Willie was like strong. He was so respected. It was like this, like, don't mess with him. Like he's an OG. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, I like, yeah. Willie Long like, was like, you know. Yeah, I, I like where now, now knowing the backstory and how in depth it, and just where that character gets, you know, everything from, I, I, I love, because now, now I'm thinking about, I'm like, dang, like, just your presence, just the way you, you, you would walk, the way you would talk this, the way that you would speak with your eyes, and it's like, dang, now I understand why it was so rooted, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, like, like, when, 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 when Goldmouth is beaten, right, Eddie's character, mm -hmm. and my guy goes, that's enough, Goldmouth, man's yeah. taking over beating. Mm -hmm. And everything stops in a heartbeat. How is this guy? How did he have that kind of power over the whole joint? Mm -hmm. Even at, at, at that maturation, at that age, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it to come from something. So the, the going back to the, 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 the great question you posed, how each character is different, right? Now you look at the character, even in that movie, Willie really Long as the, the, the old man, when he's sitting in that wheelchair, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you're all free now, boys. You're all mm -hmm. free now. Mm -hmm. And he said, they, they said, wait a minute, old man, are you saying that this ain't Ray and Claude in these boxes? He said, wait a minute. You mean it, <laughs> it, 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 it didn't work? And I said, <laughs> I never said it didn't work. <laughs> but even the way, see, the way he held a cigarette, the cigarette wasn't held between these two fingers. Next time you watch that, you mm. see the cigarettes held, I held it between these two fingers because these fingers don't work because they were caught up in a, in, 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 a, in a machine that caused this to happen. So that, that, that even those little kind of details mm. and when his hand shaped, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know, That's everything is, is 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 built bent. Now you take that and then mm. you jump to a how high, right? Mm. And you see Dean Kane, <laughs> and he's like, Did you mean to tell me that you when they dropped them Cheetos on my rug, on my mm. tapestry? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now I see so <clears throat> iconic, so iconic. Right. And then he gets them brownies in him. Mm -hmm. And he turns into somebody altogether different. Yeah. You know, when he says, uh, DJ, hit me. And I'll tell you a funny story about that. When I, mm -hmm. when we got to work one day and they had a guy dressed in the same costume that I had on in really? the, um, for that scene. So I said, okay. uh, who's that? They go, oh, well, he's the guy that's going to do the dancing part. And I said, well, what you need him for if you got me? He go, <laughs> well, do you dance? And that's when I said, DJ, hit me. I loved it. I love it. <laughs> and then went to work. You know what I mean? And people mm. go, was that what really you dancing? Yes. Mm. Yes. You know, mm. then you go to a movie like The Temptations, where I'm playing Barry Gordy. Crazy. That's a man that actually lives. Mm -hmm. So... I had to bring the essence of who that individual is. There are many people that think I am Barry Gordy. They're like, yo, Barry Gordy. Mm -hmm. And he and I have this joke when we run into each other. He goes, oh my God, it's Barry Gordy. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> high praise. You know? That's awesome. So, That's awesome. But it's, it's, it's finding the essence of the human being and mm -hmm. breathing life into that human being. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that it's not playing a caricature, you know? Um, when I do Sammy Davis Jr., mm -hmm. people are like, "That's too scary, man." I, you that's actually... what my dad always says. He says people's reaction to you playing Sammy, it's like, "Yo, it's like too real." It's like, yeah, yeah, they're like that. That that's not like I know uh, Quincy Jones. I was doing uh, the the musical Sammy, mm -hmm. and I played Sammy, mm -hmm. and at the opening night. Uh, Q said to me, he said, hey, man, you need to stop that shit. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I knew Sammy. And I know Sammy's dead. And mm -hmm. I know you. And I kept looking up on that stage expecting to see you. And I only saw Sammy. He said, wow. and I was sitting in the, in the second row. And you didn't have on any special makeup or anything. Mm -hmm. He said, man, that was scary. So again, is it hard to tap out of a character be, like that though? When you dive that huh? far, is it, is it hard to 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 tap out like to? Because I feel like you go so deep into it. Do you ever struggle with getting out of a character like that with Sammy? Like how do you, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, some well, you know what? take time it's, to get out of it. You know, right, right. Good, 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 good observation. It would take me like with any character that I do, like for that old man mm -hmm. in life. Right. It took me it was eight hours to get in that old age makeup. Mm. But I was taking myself into that character the whole time. So that case point, an example. Heavy D and the other brother that was uh, in, in that scene, mm -hmm. they didn't know I was in an old age makeup. They thought I was an old man. So Heavy D mm. jumps out the van when we pull up to, 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 the, to the site and he opens the door and he grabs my arm and I said, get your hands off of me. That was the wrong way to go. <laughs> and he said, oh no, sir, I was just, just being polite. And I said, do I look like I need your help? I know who you is, Fat D. He said, no, sir, not Fat D, Heavy D. I said, yeah, they call you Heavy because you fat. Now get your hands off of me. All you motherfuckers always want to touch me. Right? He didn't know the whole time it was that I was in the age. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. when he found out, he was like, oh, bah, I need to come study with you, man. Yeah. Because I believe that's who you were. Mm. We, you know, we just had the 24th anniversary, 24 years ago, that movie was made. Mm. And I posted it. And people, I posted the age makeup one and me. And people were writing in the comments. Man, I thought that was an old man at the whole the, 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 all this time. I've seen that movie a hundred times. I didn't know that was you. 
<laughs> you know? So, yes, it is a so matter good. of transformation. But to answer, getting in and getting out, mm. I leave Oba in the dressing room. Mm. And I find the essence of who that character is because it's using my body. But I don't think necessarily like that person. I haven't necessarily experienced what that person experienced, but it's a real life experience. And that backstory helps bring you into that transformation, Dominic. Mm -hmm. It helps you to transform into that. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with a lot of younger cats that'll say, I say, so tell me your backstory. Backstory, oh man, I don't pay no attention to that stuff, man. I, I just want to get my check. And I said, oh, and that's why your character looks like it looks because mm. you haven't taken time to do the study. We have the ability to represent another whole life. Now, here's something else that I've said. If I'm doing a part in a movie of somebody that was in your family, mm -hmm. you have an attachment to that individual. And if I misrepresent who that person was, you go, that's not my uncle. That's not my granddad. That's not my, you know, pop, pop. No, man. You wouldn't care who was playing it. Mm -hmm. It was a misrepresentation of fact of who your family member was. I want to represent mm. that person in their full human being life. I played in the movie Introducing Dorothy Dandridge with Halle mm -hmm. Berry. Mm -hmm. I played Harold That's Nicholas. Talks about that one. And Harold Nicholas... And Fayard Nicholas was two of the greatest dancers that ever put on a pair of tap shoes. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to play that, I had to get myself into making sure that when they shot me doing those those dance steps, mm -hmm. that was Harold. That was not, you know, don't don't cut away. No, I want you to see. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The same thing about his life. There was a time where on set, they wanted to represent something mm. that I said, well, I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't know if we have any historical fact to support that. Wow. And I won't defame this man in that way. If we can't say that that, that which he did, he did. Mm. But if we don't know that he did that and we're going to make him disparage him to that degree, I won't be a participant in that. Now, I will make a choice which I believe is scene appropriate and I hope it works for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And, you know, it's it's it was an interesting stance to take. Yeah. But. If I'm going to represent represent a fully realized human being, I'm going to represent a fully realized human being. To the fullest. And uh, it's too easy because the images that you and I and others that do what we do, those images go out around the world representing someone who has never met you. Yeah, literally. Suggesting who you might this be so or crazy. someone that appears to be you. Mm -hmm. Why would you go forward and misrepresent that person? And see, see, I, I, one thing that I feel like I talk a lot about with my friends, right, is still to this day, one of my favorite quotes from you, I've said it almost on every episode on the podcast, but it's not about how long you've been lying, it's about how long you've been paying attention, right? And, right. and, and for those who don't know, that's where it, it comes from, you know, literally I've heard this <laughs> forever, but it's like, that's something that I always found myself doing with you in particular is just like paying attention right because like that level of like professional it's like it's like for example you know if if you're if you're an athlete right if a kid aspires to be in the nba he plays basketball and he has the opportunity to one day go to an actual laker game see how the professionals move see how they work see their level of serious to see their level of dedication it yes. sparks something it does this thing where it's like yes. oh that's why they're here like that's why like none of this is given this is completely earned and 
yes. when it comes to, to 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 you, one of the things that I always admire so much is like you really putting the work and being around your energy and seeing your level of professionalism, the way you, you delegate these characters and make these choices. It's raised, it's, it's, it's speed up my learning curve. It's really raised the bar to where when I walk on set, respectfully, I, I, I'm not trying to, I feel, I, I feel extremely, not just confident, but I have like the utmost belief in the characters because of now learning that foundation of like the work and putting that, that, that time because I've been around somebody who has done that, has been able to speed up my learning curve. So that whole, you know, not about how long you've been alive, but how long you've been paying attention has always been something that's like stuck to me in my, in my head. And I guess one of the things I want to dive into now is like, as much as I've been aware of your, 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 your body of work, your dedication, how you've always been there to support me and, and, and give me the utmost upfront advice and real uh, uh, power talks to, to help elevate me. What were some of the things that you struggle with as an actor in your process of these years? What are some of the things that you feel like took you the minute to either get over, whether it be with rejection or just, uh, did you ever feel anxious? Like, what were some of the things you struggled with? How did you overcome that to now be at the level you're at now? Because we all know in this business, it's not always, there's a lot of highs and there's a lot of lows. So it's like, you know, the in-between, how do you balance that, you know? Well, another great question. Um, you know, I, I often say to people, I don't know whether it was arrogance or confidence, mm. but I always believed in myself. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and mm. with <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's just really interesting. I guess you would have to ask the person, but I did. And I am an advent learner. Mm. I want to learn at all costs, everything. And I want to be and strive to be the very best at everything that I do. Mm. You know, um, I'll give you an example of that. And then I'll try and answer because people always say, well, has it always been easy? No, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. So it's not, but easy and hard are relative. Mm. Okay. Because if it starts out hard and I work at it, I get better at it. And the better I get at it, the easier, easier it becomes. It yeah. <laughs> Facts. So, 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 so if I'm giving advice along those lines of stop concerning oneself with the end result. Mm. Be committed to the process. Stop concerning yourself with the end result. Be committed to the process. Now, I'm going to give you this. This is, this is a fact of life. Mm. You throw the ball up against the wall. I throw it up against the wall. No matter who throws it up against the wall, it's, it's coming come, back. Come down. Yep. <laughs> now, yep. relative to how far the trajectory is for the ball to get to the wall, will also determine the trajectory of how long it takes to come back. Huh. Case point and example. 1978. I'm co-starring in a world tour with a woman named Liza Minnelli. Mm. We're doing a world tour. We happen to be in Dallas, Texas. We did four shows. Then we would have some time off. We go to the next city. I come to the show, it's the fourth performance, and there's a little girl standing at the stage door who's been at every performance. I've seen her there every night. Mm. And she says, hi, Oba. I go, you here again tonight? And she says, yeah, but I can't get in, it's sold out. Mm. I said jokingly, uh, you've seen it enough, you could be in it. I went inside, Dominique, and for what I will identify in this conversation is, an act of random kindness. Mm. I go back out and I say to security, hey, she's with me, let her in. Mm. I bring her in, I put her in a chair in the wings. I say, stay out of everybody's way. Mm. Just enjoy the show. Mm. Never saw her again. Fast forward 
20 years later. I am trying to get into this movie, we've talked about it in this conversation, mm. called Light. Mm. They will not see me. Mm. Casting directors, ah, oh, yeah, we love Oba, nothing in it for him. I'm like, hey, it's about black men on a work camp. Let me in the room. I no, knew about no, this. no, no. The agents give up. They said, oh, mm. but they just, we've done everything we can get you in. Mm. Two weeks later, hey, I get the call from the agent. Hey, look, they want to see you. Okay. Mm. I go in, casting director sitting there. She doesn't want to even look at me. The director is on the telephone. Hey, what's up? What's up? We're going to put you on tape. They put me on tape. I get the call. Mm. Hey, Oba, you booked it. Oh, great. Cool. That's great. Right? It's the third lead in the movie. Mm -hmm. It says Martin Lawrence, Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence in Life, starring Oba Baba Tunde, and then the list goes from there. there, 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 there. Mm -hmm. Now, first day on set, I'm walking to, they call us the set, I'm walking to set, and the mm -hmm. woman comes up to me. She goes, hi, how do you do? Uh, my name is Tina Fortenberry. And I said, oh, nice to meet you. She says, I'm the assistant to the unit production manager, I mean, the UPM, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Brubaker. And I said, oh, cool, cool. She says, um, I met you twice before in my life. I said, really? Mm -hmm. She says, you did the movie Philadelphia with Tom Hanks. Yes, yes, I did, yeah. I was, I was a PA on that, on that movie. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. The first time I met you, though, I was a huge Liza Minnelli fan. Mm. And you did something very nice for me. I said, wait, wait. Were you that little girl that I put in that chair? She goes, yes. She said, now, I don't know why they didn't want to see you. Mm. But when I saw your name on the list, I used to go into that office, to the casting director's office, every day and say, he's really good. You should just bring him in. Mm. She said, now, I think they brought you in just so I wouldn't come back in and say that again. <laughs> but then you got put on tape. Brian Grazier, the head of Imagine Pictures, saw you and said, that's the guy I want. Mm. So you got it on your own merit, but I would like to think that I was somehow able to be instrumental in helping do something nice for you because you had done something nice for me. There's the point. The ball came back. Mm. The ball wow. came back. Wow. It took 20 years and I could have had no idea that 20 years prior that this little girl would be so instrumental in my life 20 years later. Wow. But That's see, crazy. the thing is, do it to the fullest with mm. the understanding that nothing that you have ever done is wasted in your life. Don't worry about when it comes back. Everything is always a return. Mm. I shared this with you at a family gathering one time. And, and you just happened to be going to the kitchen to get something to eat. And, and you mm. look you're like, mm. Mm hmm. And what I said, I was talking to some of the other guests that were at the house. I said, piggy bank. If you put into this bank, nickels, dimes, quarters, pennies, silver dollars, eventually, that bank will reach its capacity. Mm -hmm. And you don't need the largest denomination, which would be a dollar, to break it open. It can break open with the smallest denomination in American currency, a penny. Mm. But when it breaks open, what do you have? You have the residual of your investment. Mm. Everything that you put in there mm -hmm. is in there. Mm -hmm. Your life, from what I have discovered, is the same way. Continue to invest. Continue mm. to invest. And know that eventually it's going to break open. Now watch this. If we were dealing with finances, shorter annuities, meaning in lesser time, brings back lesser returns. Longer annuities bring back larger returns. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about when it coming back. Just know I did this. And the, but the key is this. Good and bad work the exact same way. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You're putting garbage in there, eventually it breaks open and you got nothing but garbage. And that's mm-hmm. what your life becomes. Yeah. If you're putting greatness in there, huh, what comes back is greatness. greatness. That's all you've invested in. Mm-hmm. So to answer the question about how I would deal with those times where it wasn't the greatest was I knew that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's coming back. And another thing that I shared with you, people's rejection is God's protection. Mm. <laughs> that's the real people's rejection mm. is God's protection. Mm. Yeah. So don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. There is, they cannot take from you what they did not yeah. give to you. Mm-hmm. That's yours. Okay. They can give you an opportunity to present that, which is yours. They can't take from you what they did not give to you. Mm. I love okay? that so and if much. They, if, if you, if you, re, if you feel rejection, you go into that room. I've heard no's plenty of times. Thank you very mm-hmm. much. Thank you very much. Bro, I, before I was in the union in theater, I used to crash auditions. Ah. I would go to the audition. I wasn't even in the union. And they had what they called the equity monitor. They had your name on a list if you were a member. And you, you couldn't get in the equity audition unless you were a member of equity. And I go and I see the guy at the desk or the girl. And I say, hey, what's happening? And they're like, huh? I, oh, you don't remember me now? Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. A, I got, the name is uh, Oba. Oh, mm. yeah. Hey, Oba. Yeah, man. I know. I thought you forgot me at first then. Uh, I know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so listen, uh, we, uh, we on time. And all the time I'm watching the door where they're auditioning, where somebody's mm. in there. And they're like, I like, so we on time today or we behind or what? And they look like, Oba, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look on the list. They say, Oba, I don't see your name on the list. I'm mm. like, are you serious? You know what? I'm leaving this agency. I ain't even have an agent. <laughs> I'm leaving this agency. Man, they ain't never, this is the third time this week. Then when that door would open, boom, I'd go into the room. Hey, over by the here. Now listen, I know you guys didn't know that I was going to come today, but I am here. And so, uh, 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 and then I would do whatever the soliloquy was, my monologue, mm. or sing the song, and they'd be going, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just keep right on going. And I had an answering machine. I'll never forget it was actor phone. 8401234. And I would go at the end, right? Bop! Over Baba Tunde, actor phone. 8401234. You want me in your production. And eventually, they were like, who is this guy? He's actually pretty good. Yeah. I started getting the calls. Mm. Next thing you know, rolling, 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 rolling. And the other advice that I give to assure, because I've had some experiences where you just deal with some garbage, you know, I'll, 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 I'll tell you about one or two of those. But the deal is that, is that I would, I go to everything to give mm. as opposed to get. Mm. That's you powerful. see, you have, this is a closed hand. Mm. There are two things you cannot do with a closed hand. You cannot give, nor can you receive. Take. Yeah. Open your hand and open your heart and watch what happens. See, I, I, I love this so much because when I hear your story, the first thing that comes to my mind is I love how you position yourself for the magic to happen, right? Yes. So crashing the auditions or finding the opportunities to create the magic when the magic wasn't essentially coming to you, but you're positioning for it to happen, right? Um, I love this the story that you shared in terms of how you would deal with the not so great times by just consistently being a, a student of like learning and that concept of throwing the ball and eventually it's gonna come back. The reason why that I really resonate with that and that relates like so powerful to me is because you already know, in this industry, there's so much, uh, there's so many time frames where it's like uncertainty, you know, with Roadhouse, I auditioned for it and I didn't find out I booked until a month and a half later. 
that's a month and a half that's gone by of life and time, right? And I feel like what's helped me out over these years is consistently every day, which is another thing that I feel like, you know, I've been blessed to be around with like you and Pops and the people in the family where it's like every day, just find a way to get 1% better. Like learn every day, find a way just to keep learning. And like you said, it's that putting in to the piggy bank, you're investing yourself every day. So when Absolutely. that one opportunity comes, you may not know what's going to come when that ball's going to come back. But when it comes, you're going to be ready to catch it. Cause he's like, oh, I've been investing yes. on myself. It, it, again, the analogy with Ray Donovan, I would have never thought that my experience with boxing would be the reason why it would be the, the advocating reason to get me cast into that show. Yeah. Absolutely. I sat down with you and you, really drilled me on like, yo, okay, this is the scene, the character, we really broke down, I felt confident, but that little, that little extra thing of just like yes. having experience and it's crazy how it was like, one thing you always say too, whoever's meant for you won't be missed. So I love knowing now and getting to a level of experience of being like, even though when I do feel frustration at times of like, maybe like when city of lies was delayed for a few years and we waited four years for that movie to come out and right. i'm doing these other projects and and there's the, the 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 uncontrollable time frame of when they're released you know it sometimes it would weigh on me you know i feel like i got discouraged a little bit at one point during the pandemic but what really sparked the fire again in me which is going back to the foundation just going back to just like you know what just just be continue to be a student of the game like don't, yes. don't don't allow life to play you but play life you know what i'm saying so yes you know when i hear i hear how you you articulate this like you're like you always had this belief in myself is confident it's, it's this knowing so it's like uh i remember there's a conversation we had it was i, I want to say i want to say it was it was probably like my first year after being already done, I think it was on the second season. But it was around like, yo, like, don't get don't get comfortable. Don't like, 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 I remember you, you didn't use the same analogy as the pearls, uh, the string of pearls, but use another similar analogy. I can't pinpoint it, but I just remember the conversation mostly being about like, hey, you want to have longevity in this town, you want to be able to not be a one-off so when you get in this business be prepared to be in it for longevity you know and having that mindset i feel like just what really helped because you know like i said you know, there's times where you deal with the the slow periods of time and you keep yourself proactive you keep writing keep creating so you sharing that story i just feel like people really really need to hear that it's just a reminder to not have doubt because if you have any doubt you're getting away you know one thing we still say is like, don't have a plan b plan b distracts from plan a you know, so you got to. Yes, it does. Stay 100%. Yes, it does. You know? so. Brill brilliantly stated. Mm -hmm. Brilliantly stated. Mm -hmm. And you know, something else that I want to the, 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 the recap on what you're saying in a little different way is that, you see, here's, here's a key mm -hmm. to this. And it's a key to the recipe for success. Mm -hmm. Every single day. You, you, you alluded to this moments ago. So I'm just reiterating it for those that may have missed it. Every single day, do at least one thing. I don't care. You can do as many as you want, but do at least one thing toward investing in what it is that you want to accomplish. And mm -hmm. I am sitting here telling you today, it will manifest. No doubt. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Okay? At least one thing. Okay? Whether it's making a phone call to somebody that is a, a sending an email, a text, you know, uh, looking at a scene, you know, the, do something because it's an investment. You're yeah. creating a synergy around you mm. rather than waiting for someone else to create the synergy around you. Oof, you man. see, you, right there. you are the master of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. That's not just a saying. It's that's not. a reality. Facts. That, that's a reality. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And is another thing. Results come from actions, mm -hmm. not intentions. Watch this. Love that. Love if that. you are dancing with that. someone mm -hmm. and they step on your foot and they break your foot, 
They may not have intended to do that, but you have a broken foot. Foot. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. your foot heals, and you're dancing with that person again, and they happen to step on your foot. One of two things. One, they intend to be injurious to you, mm -hmm. in which case you should move yourself away from them or move them away from you, mm -hmm. or they're clumsy and still can be injurious to you, in which case you should do the same. I suggest mm -hmm. move them away from you or you away from them. Mm -hmm. So that when you identify something or someone has been injurious to you, remove yourself. Don't give that individual or circumstance a repeat opportunity to be injurious to you again. Mm. be mindful of that say hmm see the baby gets it the baby cries when it's uncomfortable when it's hungry mm -hmm. when it's soiled or when it's in some discomfort when it's not in one of those three things it doesn't cry mm. facts that's facts <laughs> okay all right facts. and so 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 we don't want to lose that mm. you go you know what you know, and you should feel comfortable enough one way or the other with either saying, if you care something about that person or the situation, say, you know what? I got to be honest with you. What you did, I didn't care for it. Mm. And so I'm asking you, please don't do that again. Oh, you tripping, dog. You, you know, you, you're too sensitive. Let me explain something to you. I'm not tripping. Mm. It felt bad to me. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to feel bad to you. It felt bad to me. And I matter to me. Yeah. I matter to me because it's me. Mm -hmm. So I'm sharing with you that I didn't appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Please don't do it again. They do that again. Now you move yourself away from them or them away from you. Because, and that doesn't matter, whatever the relationship is, business, friendship, um, you know, it's like, hmm, it goes across often because often what we tend to do is I had, I was guilty of, of making excuses for the person that was injurious to me. Like just, well, they didn't really need it. Like trying to justify, you know? Like, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Well, oh, I'd say, I would say, oh, they really didn't mean it, man. You know, that's just one of them things. Let it go. Let, let it go. Yeah. You know? But I had to learn through the years mm -hmm. that wait a minute, maybe they didn't know what they did was injurious to me. That doesn't mean I can't tell them. Yeah. So that they do know. Yeah. From, they, from then <laughs> on, that's on how then, they respond. Oh, uh, they didn't mean it. You know what I mean? Or somebody saying, "Yo, yo, man, you you tripping? Mm -hmm. You can you you can identify it any way that you want to identify it." You can say that I'm tripping. You can say I'm, you don't like it. I'm saying to you, I didn't care for it. And don't do it again. That's it. And we can move forward. And set those boundaries. Set those boundaries. I love that. You know, yes, you matter. And it's in mm -hmm. every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. It's you in know, every it, aspect of your life. It's so crazy because it's like, you know, you, you, you've been in this business for, like I said, m multiple decades now. And you still have this joy, right? You still have this so much love and compassion and and empathy when a lot of people who have been here get depleted that they allow hollywood to rather be circumstances people wherever to strip that away from them right so outside of the business i know a lot of people that know you know what you love to do but it's like what is it that keeps you balanced because i know you're everybody knows oba you're a master horse whisperer <laughs> you know, like, because the horses like the way i've heard stories on how you've not only uh, uh trained horses but broken them down and rebuilt them up and you, you just it's, so i just want to just kind of dive into that area on like yes you, know, you bouncing so joyful again and you're not stripped great, away, great you know great question the mm. thing is and i'm glad you brought it up and because i it was we're, 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 we're simpatico in our thoughts because i was just thinking i wanted to bring up the fact that that the, you talk about the entertainment business, the industry, mm -hmm. it should be in my 
respectful suggestion to those, an aspect of your life, not the total of your life. Mm, I love that. It's an aspect of your life. It is your profession, if that's the profession you chose. What is your passion? Mm, love that. What is your passion? What do you love to do? So that's, mm. in short, what brings balance to my life mm. is that I'm not always wondering when is the phone going to ring with the next job? When is this yeah. going to be? You know, um, there's this thing that happens. It's called action and cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> action is when action it starts. And cut is cut when it stops. is when it's over. <laughs> Every, I said earlier, every mm -hmm. entrance is an exit from somewhere else. Every exit is an entrance into somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's the way life is. Mm -hmm. So when that job is over, and I know, because I've talked to you about this, yeah. I understand it. Being in that industry, the, this industry for these many years, is that there's, a, there's something that happens when you're working, man, and as you're doing what you love, and you feel this, and then it's yes. over. And then you're feeling like, Ah oh, man, I'm feeling a little depression right now. You know, what I mean? you know, what am I going to do? Well, that's when you have to. I have something else that means also something to you. If yeah. that's the only thing that means the something to you, Seems you crazy. will guarantee, you know, to be more unhappy than you are happy because mm. they tell you we can offer you mm. work. But happiness, that is that's up to you. Get that on your own. You have so, mm. so if 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 you're if you're op opting to be that the only thing that makes me happy is when I'm on set, what are you gonna do when you're not on set? That's the realest right there, Oba. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I had to like like for example, you know, Jim Carrey will always talk about like how it would make him feel when he got done off set. You know, there's a lot of stories about how he would get depressed just because of going to the reality of it. And it's like, I, I, cause when you're on set, I tell people this and obviously, you know, but it's like almost like, it's like a drug, you know, it's, it's yeah. like, it's, it's, it's like you're on this high because you're, it's a different type of high. When I say that it's like, cause in, for me, it's comparable to like being like in summer camp, you're, you're, Three, three to four months in with a group of people that you're going to to bat with, right? You're building, you're 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 really creating something, and just from the overall experience to from going through all that to now coming in and, and dealing with that stillness, which is I feel like what the issue is for most people is learning how to be comfortable with the stillness and learn. Okay, well, you know what? Like you said, everything has to come to an end. So when that comes to an end, and you're back to the state of now isolation, stillness, where, where are your values placed? Do you only feel valuable or when you're on set when you're, or, or do you feel valuable based on what you're contributing? You know, how are you servicing other people? You know, like, that's why I want to do this podcast. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not on set or if I'm not working, like, this is my way of trying to create something to service back. And I feel passion. It keeps me like going. Yeah. We have other things, whatever, yes. but it's like, it's, it's, it's not placing like the values on, for example, I, the thing the thing I feel like I really learned from you and, and see, to see you as, as I'm thinking about this is, there's a difference between success and fame. Yes. And, and yeah, you have the fame, but you are focused on the success. You know, and the success is what matters. And I feel like the value really comes from the success and putting the work and the fame, so you know that comes with it, but it's like, it's the success that matters. And, and as, as long as you're striving for success in anything you do, then you're not going to feel like it as depleted versus like trying to be like, once I, oh, I hope this, uh, I hope I book this or they, they call me in or no. Okay. Uh, damn. What's next? Yeah. It's like you go crazy, you know? Yes, you know? I do know. I do yeah. know. And, and, and you're absolutely, you, you've, you've, you've articulated it perfectly. Okay. And that is that where do you place the value mm -hmm. it's like there's a whole lot of things that play into that euphoric feeling that you feel when you're working because it's what you're it's inside of you and yeah. and creative yeah. energy if it's not being expressed 
it becomes a depressant. It really can be. It does. Okay. It's crazy. It's so crazy. You know, it, it yeah. can be. It can be. It can turn itself on, on you. So the deal mm -hmm. is, though, that there's a whole lot of things. One, when you're working, you know, you come, everybody's like, hey, look, you're the man. You know, um, you're making bank, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, you know, da, 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 da. okay. Uh, you, yep. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's going, you're going to, you, you, you're doing what you love. You get a chance to do this. And you're around people who are of the same ill caliber. Yep. See, so, so everybody, yeah. it's, it's, it's really a euphoric feeling yeah. of living in the world of make-believe, mm. but people stop remembering it's the world of make-believe. And it becomes the world of reality. Mm. And then when they step back into the world of reality, of outside it. of the world of make-believe, then it doesn't feel so good. But here's the key, is that what you do as an artist, and I've put it to the test, mm. you can do anywhere on the planet. Mm. You can do it anywhere on the planet because there are artists everywhere on the planet. We're a weird, strange breed, hmm. but I put it to the test. I've gone to countries where I didn't even speak the language and said, where are the artists? And once I got around them, boom, Exploding. you know? I mean, uh, I, I, I would learn the language hmm. of what it was. I would learn because the communication is always the same. Yeah. So you have to identify that firstly, you are, and all artists, we're citizens of the world. Mm. We're citizens of the world. Mm. Your birthright has given you that. Because you were born into this particular body with these particular gifts and you develop them and they've come up even before you even realized they were coming up. But you knew, wow, I feel good when I'm doing this. I really like this. I like this. This is fun. You know, you don't have to teach a baby to play. They know how to play. That's what they want to do. Yeah. So what is it your passion is? That's what you've got to go back to, you know, mm. and, 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 and be careful of making that earning because honestly, that's a wake up call because you'll make X number of dollars and then you get this automobile and then you get a bigger, a better of the same. The, the same things yeah. is the same thing. You just yeah. get a bigger house, you get a bigger, better car, it, but it's the same thing. Car takes you from one, it's an automobile takes you from one place to the next. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. But what value did you place on that? Oh man, I'm rolling out of and who is that for? Is that for you or is that for someone else? Because yeah, all you're doing yeah. is getting in here and going from here to there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, when, when you know, uh, can, you, can you get that meal? Yeah, I, I'm not hungry. Oh, okay. Then you're okay. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be able to go to the most famous, fanciest, most expensive restaurant. When you place the value on that, that's when... What do you place the value on that's in your life? Mm. Because when it's taken from you, what do you have? Exactly. What do you have? And, 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 you, know, you know what? I mean, it's, it's, I'm gonna go ahead. No, I was just saying, it's, it's, I just, I feel like that's just so, the hits, the hits like in the soul, right? Because it, it, this year for me in particular, has been a year of a lot of reassessing on value, right? Um, we live in a society today where everything is is like like a quick dopamine rush, right? Yes. Getting, getting likes, getting comments, getting followers, you know, wanting to be a celebrity for whatever reason i feel like the way people are are becoming celebrities now it's not the same value as what it was i feel like back in the day because 
back in the day, a lot more times it was, it was someone was a celebrity. It was like because of what their work did versus trending social media wise. And yes, come celebrate because maybe of a, a video of uh, I don't know, like there's a lot of cases and examples, but more of the story is like understanding that your value as a person is 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 what needs to come first and, and, and your value shouldn't come from the metrics of getting a nice car or getting a nice house, getting like, for me, I had to learn that. Cause again, it, it's, it doesn't last. It, it's, it's like temporary. It's like that feeling like it's like I, you get a new car and the first couple of months you're like, ah, yeah, I love a new car. Cool, cool, cool. And then it starts to become normal. And then a year goes by and now you want another thing. And it like, it's like that feeling like, I don't think there's a problem with it, but it never stops. So it's just managing the like, uh, what's the word for it? Managing, managing the, the, the levels of, like you said, value placed on it. Because like I said, like uh, this past weekend, for example, the experience I got with my family, me and my brother pops, you know, my girl were out there. And like that, that to me was so much more fulfilling and, and, and it was, was so good to my soul. It feels so good being around, being with my family than just going out and just buying something that I, I don't really care too much about. I'd rather work hard and, and feel fulfilled and buy my parents at their house. Let me go get them yes. a car. Like I want to be in that mindset of, like you said, giving that always trying to take, you know, and, and, right. and just, right. you know, so man, I, I feel there's so many. Well, well, check, so check. Check this, check this out. Mm. This is a hardcore reality. Life does not culminate in anything. Mm. Let me say it again. Life does not culminate in anything. So it's always about the moment. Yeah. Because that's all there is. We have divided time into three things. Past, present, and future. future. But watch this. Hmm. I'm going to show you how closely those three are associated. Hmm. What I am about to say is in the future. While I'm saying it, it's in the present. Once I have said it, it's in the past. So relative to how quickly I say it, look how closely future, present, and past are associated. Hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. So stop thinking about trying to amass something. Because they go, man, when is it going to happen? When, when, is, when is what going to happen? When am I going to be able to have a series that lasts this much and I don't have to worry about working anymore? Okay, even if that happens, what do you do next? Mm. You still have to wake up the next day and live. Yep. Now, you wake, you've woken up and you don't have to you're not worrying about, you know, somebody else is cleaning the pool. You got the big mansion. Da, 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 da. You don't worry about it. You're going to make a phone call and food will come to you. Da, da. What? Where is life now? Mm. See, if you've only made it about those things and you accomplish those things, then what? Malachi said, mm -hmm. I said to him when he was uh, about 14, I said, Mal, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to uh, write down for daddy what you want when you grow up. Take mm -hmm. your time. Give me a couple of days. And so he did. A couple of days later, he says, I have that, 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 that list that you asked me for. I said, okay. I said, I'm going to read it. But now I want you to go and write what you would do after you've accomplished all those things. Mm. He looked at me. He's like, Oh, I said, because you see, that's the thing. It doesn't end. <laughs> that part. And when, 
it's, they're, they're, it's, it doesn't end until you take your last breath. So the point mm -hmm. is, stop focusing on the end. Mm -hmm. the, hap the happily ever after at that, at the, in, the, in the storybook was only a way that they ended the book because they had to stop writing. Mm -hmm. Wasn't based on reality. The end does not mean the end. It's just the end of this book. Mm. You didn't stop at five years old. You went yeah. five years old, six years old. Mm. You don't stay six years old forever. Yeah. You become seven years old. Yeah. And then on. you become eight <laughs> and nine and 10. Thanks. Okay. So that's what we want to identify mm. is that it does not cul culminate in anything. And if you're thinking you it does, you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. You're really going to be like, this is it? You mean I worked all this time and, and, and now I'm going to die? Well, yeah. Everybody does perish from life as we know it. But in the moment, in the moment, live in the moment because that's what there is. Mm -hmm. There's the moment and the moment continues from 30 seconds to 60 seconds, you know, but those are just passing moments. But that's why, you know, you know, have to you have your dog, right? And the dog go, you know, you go outside and you come back in the dog <laughs> like it hasn't seen you in a hundred years. Mm. Why? Because it's living in the moment. Moment, facts, like like to the fullest. To the yes. fullest. To the fullest. Yes. Enjoy it every moment because that's all there is, mm. you know. And 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 you know, part of the moment is when it's not so great. You're yeah. like, you know what? That's, you know, you've heard the terminology. This too shall pass. It will. Yeah. Just live through it. You know, it's crazy. Over it's, 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 it's what, you, what you said is 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 so relative because you know I, I I remember the feeling when I first like felt financial freedom, right? In a sense of like, man, I can afford to have my own spot, I can buy my own food. I ain't gotta ask family for me. like I can help. I can send. As a matter of fact, mom, you want to, let me let me just and like that feeling felt so good. Now I remember like. I don't, like I, on my vision board growing up, I always had like this, like these different type of styles, like lofts, right? And I always want to have like a badass loft, and I want to have like my nice car, or whatever. Okay, cool. And and I got it, manifested it. It took years, but boom, got it, right? I remember sitting in the loft one day, so bored, so bored. I was like, it's weird. It's like. Okay, if I have money in the bank, I got the loft. I have, I have a car that, that I'm happy about, that I can get around in. And why do I feel so unfulfilled still? You know, I felt, I just felt bored. And I was like, because the happiness can't come from this. The happiness no. and, the, and the, it's going to have to come from the passion and the servicing and giving back, you know? So it's like, yeah. you know, just hearing this, encompassing this whole story. Um, I, I love that we're able to dive into that because, you know, for anybody listening, I just really want them to really understand and realize, like, like the happiness and, 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 and the joy is going to come for it's going to come from based on not only what you do for yourself, but for other people, you know, yes. anything else. It's just the icing on the cake. It's cool, but it's not going to it's going to get old. Like, I, 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 I that's why I use that analogy, because I. I was tripping. I was like, I was like, am I in lack of gratitude right now? Cause I'm like, but why do I feel so? And, and I, I, I realized it, you know, and it helped me get to a point, you know? So um, I'm just glad that we're able to dive into that, you know? And I know we've been on here for a little bit. I just kind of wanted to ask you one more thing so we could wrap things up. Um, yes. Uh, what was, what was something that you had wished for in the past being an actor and being in this industry? that's now here does that oh, make sense yes yes um actually um it's a twofold answer to the question mm -hmm. because i i i just i never started out 
with the intention to accomplish a specific thing like, oh, I want a television series. Oh, I want mm. a da da da. Mm. I, I wanted to do great work. I wanted to do meaningful work. Mm. And I've been able to do that. And, and, and I, I get emotionally full as I even say that because when I run into people and they say, Man, I love you. Then I loved you in blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. I loved you. But I, I also have done projects that have made a difference and give reflection to some of the injustices in society. Yeah. Miss Evers' boys, where those men and women's lives probably we just remembered in terms of a history book, but when we mm. did the movie, people got a chance to see this egregious wrong. Mm. Philadelphia, where people that were suffering with HIV got an opportunity to be seen, not as their illness, but in their humanity. Mm. Uh, the movie Life, while it was couched as a comedy, there's nothing funny about two people being locked up in prison for a lifetime oh. for a crime that they did not Baby commit. <clears throat> you know, so through uh, a, a, a movie, and it, 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 it's, it was one of the movies that I'll, that I'll share that was another thing, it's called Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And in that, there's a segment in that movie where I actually, um, we laugh about this, but there's a section in this movie where I, I took on your dad's persona. I remember you telling about this. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Yes, and 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 it, it was, but it was paying. It was my own way of paying tribute to him, mm. in the sense that he is the kind of human being, and, and, and is instilled that in you that really, he's straight ahead. If yeah. he's for you, he's for you. He's, he's, not, not, he's not, he's not. And, <laughs> and, and, and but what, I've, what, what I have learned, though, is that he's been open in the many years that I've known him to being able to take a different look at it. So he's even mm -hmm. growing in even in that. But, yeah. but, but here it is that I was able to portray that through, that's a real human being in that, in that movie. Uh, so it's, where my career is, which I'm so thrilled about, is mm -hmm. I am, you know, on the television series SWAT, playing, you know, Hondo's dad, Shamar's dad. Mm -hmm. I'm, we've been able to bring some stories to life about not just the firearms and the police thing, but the family that are of these human beings and to Real tell time. some moving stories. Mm -hmm. We just had something happen, which I don't think has ever happened that I'm knowledgeable of. <laughs> on, on Friday, the show was canceled. Yeah. And on Monday, it was uncanceled by the same network. Wow. Now, usually if a show is canceled, it gets moved to a different network. Somebody else yeah, picks it up, on. but it didn't. But here's what happened was the fans spoke up. They said, no, mm. no, we want to see that. Mm. We're moved by that. We're connected to these characters. We're connected to stories. One person said, it made me believe in the police again. Wow, that's powerful, though, especially for right now. Powerful. That, that, that's what right you're now. able to do with your art. Yeah, yeah. You know, the number of people that hopefully we'll see what you're doing right now with this podcast that might take one glimpse of something that we've said today or that you've said in the others that might them go, wow, I needed to hear that today. I always tell people this story and then we'll, we'll close with this is that I always reference a woman named Alma Smith. Mrs. Smith mm. happened to be the mother of 
my best friend who I grew up with. And one mm -hmm. day I came from school mm -hmm. and I guess my, I had had a rough day and my head was hanging down. And Miss Smith, for whatever apparent reason, took my chin in her hand, lifted it up, looked in my eyes and said, it's going to be okay because you're special. And for whatever reason, I heard her. Mm. And for whatever reason, I believed her. And I share that story with you and anybody that sees this to say that we all have the ability to be a Mrs. Smith in someone's life. Mm. Just in what you're doing right here, you may make the difference that somebody might hear it. Yeah. So that you know that right now you have value. Mm. You have value, Dominique. And everybody that's in the sound of our voices, no, you have value. You have value. One thousand percent. You don't have to wait for anybody's permission to be great. Yeah. Decide on being great. And then take one step, at least one step every single day toward doing it, mm. to get toward there and it will manifest Oof. honestly oh boy, i love you so much uh, this this episode was honestly th there's there's just things that i needed to be here today from you so even if 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 that one person was me today hey, it was me mm. i know that mm. when this goes up you know you know it's crazy it's, it's doing these episodes there be times where, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of editing, you know, with putting these together. And sometimes it feels a little bit, you know, uh, tedious, you know, in terms of just like the, 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 the consistent, you know, hours of editing in front of the work, whatever. But nothing feels better than when I get like these random calls, right, from like one of my friends in the acting community. And they're like, yo, Dom, bro, like, thank you bro i needed that episode like like I, I i i was getting anxious and i was dealing with this like i have a friend that just has a brand new newborn you know he's got married he's got into a house and was getting frustrated he was kind of dealing with the process and has been dealing with the struggle of comparison you know and one of the episodes yeah. that i i put up with me and billy magazine you know when billy was talking about the concept of not comparing yourself you know it's a natural thing to do but that episode had such a strong impact i won't say massive i won't say strong impact is the word of choice in his life for him to call me and to really be like yo dom like i, I like the 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 love i was like that's why this is this is happening like yeah I, it's 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 great getting a thousands of views whatever but getting a message or getting that call from somebody that really like had that influence because it could be that one person that goes and now influences another thousand or 10,000 or a million or whatever the number is. Absolutely. But it's, it's, it's actually targeting somebody it's in, and, and I, I, I want to do it. Cause that's what actors round table did for me. Like during the, the pandemic, yeah. man, like I would hear certain things from these actors. I was like, thank you for saying that. Like, it's not just me. Like I, I, I thought, All right. I the the I thought I was feeling this and, and maybe I was tripping. I'm not. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just how to yeah. manage the expectations and manage the reality and balance this and having a healthy balance on it all versus put on your values on one place on that call, yes. on that audition or whatever, you know? So yeah, you sharing that. It was just really informative. I know that for me, this is one of my favorite episodes already. This is gonna have so many gems in it. I can't wait to just go back and rewatch this and for everybody tuning in, thank you. Please make sure to go follow my godfather, Oba Baba Tunde. Make sure to go check him out on SWAT, the show that just got from canceled on season six to uncanceled on the same network. Come on, come on, big blessings. And um, is there yeah. anything else you have coming out next, Oba, that you want to mention, you want to talk about, or? You know, uh, yes, I did a, um, I did an audio book. Oh, dope. And um, it's called Jembe, and the, the djembe drum is a drum. This is an interesting, it's, a, it's about the journey of this drum, but it is now, mm. it's an African drum mm. that goes back to the 1800s. And it is now the most played drum around the world. And it's an interesting look at the evolution of something that starts small in almost in what we're talking about. 
that you could never imagine where it could take, where it could go. And the lot, the number of lives that it has touched and the way it now exists in the world, you know, it is really, it's, 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 it's really, you know, I, I, I when I, uh, when it comes out, I, I did the audio version of the book. The book is out now on Amazon, but <clears throat> I will make sure that you have a copy and you just hold it up and show your audience and there maybe they can check it out, you know, and here you go. Godfather putting it down. You already know. I already, man. I, I, I'm. All right. I love you to life, baby. I, I'm boy. already knowing. I'm already knowing. I appreciate you so much. I love you too. And I, I'm seriously, I really appreciate you coming on because this is, this is one that I feel like was really needed, you know? Yes. For all of us. Nah, for real. Thank for you. Real. Thank you to your audience again. Absolutely. You know? All right, y'all. Well, hey, that was another episode of the Inspire to Inspire podcast. You already know where to go. Make sure you go follow Ova Batunde, me, Don's Perspective. We'll be dropping the episode once a week, every week. Make sure you go follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, too. We all across the board. And we're going to catch y'all next week, man.